last week on Von Halle Adventures. I'm excited to walk again today. Today is supposed to be the hardest portion. Oh my gosh, you see that? Whoa. I don't know about Crystal, but I'm feeling pretty off today. I'm just like done with this trail, just staring at roots and rocks and mud. And One of the things I actually really like, there's always a shoreline. We just finished the lock here at Beach. Did you hear that? Yeah. Ready to get off this lock. This is incredible. Dear Scotland, <laughs> if you need people to move here, we will. This week on the West Highland Way, adventure meets beauty as we delve into the heart of this trek, discovering how epic the landscape can be while also beginning to unravel the real reason we were called to this land. Amidst the awe-inspiring landscapes and introspective moments, we'll encounter some wildlife and also deal with some mishaps that leave us scouring the hills of Scotland. Oh, I did a bad thing. Get ready to grab your hiking boots for another couple of days on this enchanting trail. <laughs> We're Brian and Crystal, and this is Von Halle Adventures. everybody. I think B and I are having both a one of those mornings where we just really want to sleep in. We finally finished the lock section and today is 14 miles which I think also might be part of it because our last 14 mile day we didn't roll in till 9 p.m. <laughs> to the place where we're staying. I think that's at least part of it for me. I can't speak for B, but he's in the shower. I'm just really tired this morning getting up, but I know once we're on the trail, it's gonna be absolutely great. I'm still really grateful, but I just need to like wake up. Oh, this is the best thing I've ever seen, you guys. Look at this. Brilliant. This place just got 10 times better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chilly. This is probably the coldest morning so far. Yeah, it's like in the 40s, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Whew, I think it was only a high of 56 today, but it's 8.30 in the morning. I feel like it's like 45, 46 right now. <sighs> Fahrenheit. The uphill climb has begun. Oh, yeah. It says it's supposed to be a nice, steady incline for about 2,900 feet today. Just steady up the entire way. 10 miles. Oh, yeah, about 10 miles. I'm excited for the climb today. Yeah, me too. The views are going to be excellent. One of the things that's really good to remember when walking is to always look back at what you've done because there's a sense of accomplishment. As Pride and I have been looking back just to go, yeah. Sometimes you get this completely different view like that. That was a beautiful view. Don't go without one, two, three, and go. 
13. This is the best day of the year, I bet. It is a glorious day to be alive in Scotland. It is the land of magic and wonder. <laughs> like, look at this. Yeah, wow. Ooh, there's a bathtub and a big bed so we can sleep together. So. I think for the amount for Scotland, I think this is a good price. <laughs> which isn't for 44 kilometers, which is, I know it's at least two days, but we have a lot of bars, <laughs> like 12 bars, and we're staying in hotels, so I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, if you get a chance to stop at the Green Welly, that place has got a lot of useful items in there for travel and outdoors and things and stuff. Brian and I really almost wanted to go on a shopping spree right there. They had a lot of great looking outdoor clothing, and that is our weakest. <laughs> just bought this fleece. Yeah. Looks nice. 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah, really good prices too. It is an absolutely gorgeous day on the trail. I feel super grateful because this is one of the rainiest areas in Scotland. Actually, just in the UK in general, apparently. And we have bright blue skies. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. This is definitely a section, though, I would say, if you are walking during this kind of time of year. It's nice to have like a sun hat, neck gaiter, light long sleeve shirt, blocking from the sun. Yeah. It's all out in the open. There's no shade, no trees. It's just out in the open next to the highway. There's crash the drone. I don't understand how. Oh no. Oh, I did a bad thing. I was flying the drone and I turned away for a second and it crashed into the hill here somewhere on this trail. And all the GPS and all the locators are not working. So we're just eyeballing this, just looking around. We got about a 120 foot radius circle and we're just gonna search for it. Okay, here we go. Of all places, not in the woods. Open space. You can't locate it. There's like no map. I hear like a tiny click, 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 click. I feel like it was up, like up here. When it was coming back, I was lowering it, but it was it was up higher ground, so it hit the ground faster. I think. <laughs> It has been over an hour now. I've stopped searching because I realized that we can get GPS coordinates, I believe, from DJI, who makes the drone. Brian is doing one last change. He's right. Can you guys see him? He's right up there. Brian is on a mission. Oh my gosh, it's making me worried he's gonna fall. Oh my god. So I'm on DJI support. Really hoping they can give us the GPS coordinates. Brian's coming back down too. Oh my gosh, you guys. They said give him three to five minutes. Um, to confirm a solution. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I think we figured it out. Brian's looking. I went to find my drone, even though the drone is dead, and it showed the last known location GPS coordinates. I put them in my phone, handed it off to B, and right now he's looking. B's way over there. Oh, we got it. 
I'm just hoping it's not broken. Uh, fuck, let me see. It's like the leg won't, won't uh, uh, rotate in position. Oh no. Do you want to see if it starts up? Yeah. Uh oh. How's it look? Did it go? You try it. Okay. Flying. It's flying. Dang. Okay, maybe we just give Nelson a little rest though. <sighs> okay, good. Okay. Gotta give Crystal credit for uh, staying steady. I, I freaked out, I panicked, and that pretty much caused half the problems. But uh, luckily, Crystal was level-headed, figured out the GPS coordinates, and uh, we found him. Woo. I'm a little bit better in emergency situations. I stay pretty calm. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. One team, one dream. One team, one dream, baby. Okay, we're gonna oh, go walk bye. now. Guys, this is the most, this is just so beautiful. This is, the, ah! I wish you all were here right now and could see this in person. Like what? I can't believe this is real. This has to be just the most epic section of the West Highland Way. So the one thing I've noticed for this trek is different um, from my last is that one felt really self-reflective, whereas this trek feels kind of like, I don't know, searching for home or like, I feel like we're on a search for home. Yeah, to, yeah, get a feel for the land where we would like to settle down if we have an opportunity to settle down in Scotland. Yeah. Or anywhere, really, just... Where is home? Yeah. I think Brian and we're both at this place, Brian and I were talking earlier, that we don't have a home base at all. <laughs> and it's, uh, we have a storage unit <clears throat> in the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State, but we haven't found a place besides Scotland <laughs> where we've actually felt like at home in the land. And this yeah. is one of those places and but we're not, from the UK, so it's not like this simple thing to just move here. I feel that this walk is the starting of calling in wherever we were going to land somewhere, even though I still want to travel 75% of the time. It would be nice to have a place to come back to. We have our van Beatrice, which I love, but maybe we'll just come back for six months out of the year every year. I mean, I'm cool with that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just expensive getting hotels that length. Maybe we just build a van out in Scotland. There you go, or we just buy one. Oh, yeah. Just buy one, just store it here, then we can, whenever we come over, we can. <gasps> I like that idea. That's a cool idea. I love that a lot. Because then we could live in Scotland five or six months out of the year, but just in a van, you know? Yeah. Totally cool. Oh, this is a great idea. Maybe eventually they'll let us in. <laughs> huh. Stay tuned for that, you guys. 
I'm kind of curious. So do, do you like it? Oh, this the West Highland Way. Yeah, and just like doing oh, yeah. this every day. This is a great first trek. Yeah, I've never done this before. <laughs> I think that this is my favorite form of travel now. This slow tourism. I feel like you integrate into the land and I don't know, get a better feel for a place because we just got one last year for 10 days in a car and hanging out, but. Yeah, we drove in these same areas with the car. Now we're walking these areas that we, that we drove last year and it's a whole different uh, perspective. How do you think? I'm kind of curious. Well, like, just, what you do you see things you can't see from the road, you know, and you see more of the land that you're just walking on the land. I just feel more connected with, with what we're doing. Yeah. Rather than just driving around. But so I really feel like we should check out Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Or some more trails in Scotland. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. Scotland. This is cute. Yeah. Population 12. Really? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's where we're staying, B. Wow. Yeah. So nice this place came highly recommended on some Facebook groups, and I definitely splurged on this one. Usually on the outside of the hotels that are on the West Highland Way, they usually have the drinking water outside. So it's really nice. It's nice too, in case you're whizzing by, you can always stop, get more water. Single by cottage, yeah. Okay. It's a single by cottage behind the property. You really can't miss it. Okay. It's a really nice room. Okay, cool. So these are for pack lunches. Some places offer this and you just can fill them out and get a nice little lunch for the day. This is especially nice because I don't think there's another stop for two days to actually eat in the middle of the day, if that makes sense, for our walking, so. The woman just told us we have a cottage to ourselves. So this is actually more than a room. Wow, it's like a little house. I didn't know that's what I booked. I was just like, I'm just booking the last room they have. Wow, so oh, there maybe, it is right there. Maybe that's why it was a little expensive. Yeah, because you booked us a house. <laughs> Wow. Now this is cool. Oh, my not. Oh, don't you have to do that thing where you kind of... I can never do these UK doors. I can huh? never do them. How do you do it? I don't know. I just okay. kind of turn things. Okay. Whoa, how'd you do that? I turned the key all the way around. Ah. B. Yeah. So wow. This is like Let's see what's in here. Oh, wow. We got an actual, wow, proper bathroom. Whoa. Very cool. This one's cool. Yeah. This place is very nice. Did we even check the dinner? Like, what kind of menu is it? I have no idea. I don't be surprised. Okay. No matter where we go, there's always potatoes, vegetables, usually some sort of, like, Indian kind of inspired dish. What did you say? And always curry. like some tatties, a curry, usually some sort of vegetable burger for us, or just regular burgers for other people. But I have a good feeling about this place. What you you too. Here's a good luck. Yeah. Great day. Great day. Pickles? We gotta get that. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Everything sounds good here. They have vegan, vegetarian, gluten free. Oh my gosh. That looks insane. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I love a good pickle. Mmm. Oh, God. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. So good, you guys. We're gonna see 
a little salted caramel chocolate tart, some raspberry sorbet, and this little tiny little guy. <laughs> what is it? It's definitely beer. It's beer. Yeah. Huh. It's like a really dark beer. Wow. Wow. This sorbet is insane. Wow, B. Like, this is... It, it tastes like a creamy sorbet, but there's no dairy in it. Wow. It's really good. I'm gonna try this. I don't know if I pour it or... <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> oh my god, babe.